All right, so in this next part of the tutorial, we're going to do everything in Nuke. Now, um, this is kind of a preview of where we're going with this. So we start out with the two HDR images uh, that are EXR fi format files uh, of the Chrome ball from the two different angles. And we're going to process each of the photos in Nuke and merge them so that ultimately we end up with a single spherical image that doesn't have a reflection of a photographer and doesn't have any distortions in it. Then this spherical image can be used in Maya as a light source and reflection map. So that's kind of the overall process. Let's walk through this step by step in constructing that. So first step is to read in the two files. So with my mouse over the node graph, I'll just uh, tap the R key for read and that'll give me a file read uh, dialog box and I'm just going to navigate to my HDR images and I'm going to have sequences turned off for this and I'm going to select our front light and our side light EXR files. So these are the two EXR files that we saved out of Photoshop. We'll go ahead and open those and so now we have two read nodes, one of each image now, uh, if you haven't used Nuke before, this is the viewer that's actually displaying the image and it's got an input one and it's got multiple inputs. You can only see one right now. So if I want to connect any uh, operation or node to the viewer, I just click on that node and hit the number one. And now the viewer is looking at that photo. If I click this other photo and hit one, now that's looking at that. So if you've never used Nuke before, just a quick explanation. In this area, this is the node graph. This is giving Nuke the instructions it needs to process information. So the first step in this process is read a file. And here are the properties of that file. So if I double click, I bring the read node. This is read number three, read number three up here into the properties. And this is the full path to that file. I can double click on this node and bring its properties to the top. That's read four. That's read four, and uh, there's the file path. And if I want to have this viewer looking at this file, I just click here and I tap the number one. I have another input here, so I can click on this file and hit number two. And then when I hit one, two, one, two, that lets me toggle back and forth. Okay, so that's a quick intro into the viewer, into properties, to the node graph. So what our first step in this process is to crop down these two images so we only have the chrome ball visible and the chrome ball goes from edge to edge in our image. So I'll just start out with this first file here. I hit one to see it and I want to bring in a crop node. So with my mouse here in the node graph I'm going to hit the tab key. And when I hit tab I get um, the ability to type in the name of a node that I want and I'm going to type in the word crop because I want the crop node. And so I'll hit enter and that gives me the crop node. Now, just as a heads up in Nuke, depending on where your mouse is, different keys, different hotkeys will have different uses. So if I want to add another crop node to my node graph, I can uh, click my other read node and tab the tab key. It's going to have the last node I used. I'll hit enter. That's all great. That's what that does when the mouse is in the uh, node graph. If I accidentally have my mouse in the viewer and I hit the tab key, I end up going into 3D view. Uh, so if you end up doing that by accident, that's what you did. All you have to do is keep the mouse in the viewer and hit tab again, and it brings you back to your 2D view. Okay, so I'll double click this crop three. Actually, uh, so I don't accidentally get anything confused, I'm just gonna clear out my properties panel just by clicking this X and I'll double click crop three. I can use my mouse ball to roll in or out from this view. And I'm just going to be able to drag these controls that appeared when I uh, double clicked on the crop node. So I double clicked the crop node to bring its properties up and these controls that let me kind of control that crop. So again, I can zoom in using my mouse roller um, or I can hold the Alt key and use the middle mouse button to zoom in. I'm just pushing forward on my mouse with the middle mouse button with the Alt key clicked. And I can drag this in just to the edge of the ball. And then if I hold the Alt key and my left mouse button, I can go up to the top of the image, letting go of the Alt key, just left mouse clicking to drag this in. Alt key, left mouse to drag over to the edge, letting go. I have just the mouse button, no Alt key right there. 
Alt key, left mouse dragging. So I get to the bottom. Okay. So you basically want to just get to the edge of the ball there. And then I'm just using my mouse wheel uh, to zoom out. I can also, with my mouse over the viewer, tap F for fit. And now I can see the whole screen. Now, when I started out with this crop, all it's doing is basically blotting out all of the pixels outside of this area. Um, they're still there. This is the size of the original photo. So what I want to do is tell Nuke reformat this image to the size of the crop. So I'll just click on this checkbox. And now, using my mouse roller to zoom out again, now I've got this image that's like 1700 pixels-ish by 1700 pixels. So that's pretty good. That's good for crop one. Uh, so, or in this case, it's actually crop number three. So I'll uh, click on X to clear out my properties. Now those crop controls are gone. And I'll double click on crop four. Uh, I can't see it because it's not connected to the viewer. So with crop four selected, I'll just tap the number one key. And so now that image is in the viewer. And I know I've got that crop, so I can just control all of this. I'm not using the control button, by the way. I'm just using my left mouse button to bring in all of these crop controls to square up this ball. OK, so I will zoom in to the edge. We just want to kind of get to the edge. There we go. Alt key to drag around. Zoom in. Try not to cut off the edge. There we go. OK, so there we go. Um, again, we'll hit reformat, zoom out. Now we've got a, a, this cube is about, or a square is about 1,500 by 1,500. OK, so now what I want to do is make uh, Nuke rescale these images so that they're exactly the same size. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit tab, and there's something called reformat. So we're going to reformat these images. Reformat. All right, and I'm going to create a custom format. And this this one image here, hitting one, this is 1580, almost 1600, and this one hit one, 1700. So um, how about I go ahead? We're just going to create a format that is 1650 by 1650. So in our output format for this reformat node, one of the things I can do is there's a lot of uh, setups already and this is from my previous walkthrough of my tutorial I'm just gonna create a new format I'm gonna give it a name and I'll just call this uh, square 1650 and then make the X and the Y 1650 1650 your results may vary so just you can select an image ideally a pixel uh, value that's you know somewhere halfway between nice and rounded uh, between your two different images. I'll hit OK. And so now if I connect my reformat node, um, you see I'm getting 1650 by 1650. I've got my crop controls here. Uh, I'll just click this X in my properties window to hide the crop controls. So now they're gone. And um, the last thing I want to do is make sure that Nuke actually scales up or scales down the original image. So the resize type here is going to be distort. And what that's just going to do is make sure that the top to bottom of the original image is scaled and stretched to the top to bottom, left to right of my new format. OK. So I can just uh, select this node by clicking it, Control C to copy it. I'll select my crop 4, Control V to paste it. So now I've got two identical reformat nodes that are scaling our two images. Um, and they're both now exactly the same resolution, 1650. And so now all I need to do is uh, convert them into spherical format. Right now they're in mirror ball images. So I will just go ahead and on my first reformat, hit tab and start typing in the word spherical transform. And there it is. I just need to type the beginning of it. And there it is. And I'll click on it. And so now I've got a spherical transform. By default, the input is mirror ball. By default, the output is lat long, which is exactly what we want. Uh, the only thing we want to do is change the output format. I'm going to go ahead and set this to 2K lat long. So it's 2048 by 1024. Uh, older versions of Nuke or versions that maybe don't have CAR VR installed might not have this 2K lat long 
installed in it. If you need to just create it yourself, you can always go to new and you can just call it whatever you want, my lat long, if you like, and just put in these values, 10, 2048 by 1024, that's fine. All right, so now I've got my lat long. This is the format needed by uh, any program like Maya to create a spherical image. So the only issues with this image are that um, it's pinched in the edges where the uh, the ball gets kind of highly distorted. And also, of course, we've got our photographer in view here. So I'm going to basically take my second image, overlay it, align them, and then use that second image to basically clone over these distorted areas as well as the photographer. So I'm going to copy my uh, spherical transform, control C, go to my other reformat, control V, paste that in. So now we've got our two spherical transforms, two different points of view. We'll use a merge node to layer these on top of each other. So I select both of these. I'm just using the shift key or you can drag select and I can tap tab and type in the word merge. There it is. Or I'm just hitting escape just to show you. I can select both of these and tap the letter M as in merge and I get a merge node. Okay. So now in the merge node, our operation is over and that's really not the operation we need. Initially, so we can line these up, I'm just gonna change this to average. So it's just a blend of these two. And that'll let us see the two images together while I move one of them. So a merge node is gonna put the A over the B. Uh, I'm gonna rotate the B input here and you can see if I zoom in with my mouse ball, A, B, okay. So I'm double clicking the spherical transform for the B image and I can rotate that output image. And so if I take the Y rotation, which is that vertical Y axis, and just say negative 90 degrees, that's gonna rotate it 90 degrees to the left. And you can see we're starting to line up these two images. So now this projection screen is uh, kind of lined up. We're getting things close, there's the light bulbs. So I'm just gonna click into my Y rotation and I wanna try and get the left and the right edge of the screen roughly lined up. So with my cursor in between the nine and the zero of 90, I can hit the down arrow on my keyboard and that continues to rotate that image. And you can see how it's rotating to the left. Zoom in with my roller ball. There we go. Now, um, the, the image that I've been rotating, it's a little bit high. So let's go to the X axis, which lets me kind of rotate this. I'm just using the up arrow now, kind of adjusting that. And then let's try the z-axis, hitting the up arrow. There we go. So I'm just trying to lay that one image of the screen over top of the other image of the screen. There we go, we're pretty close. Let's try this x-axis again. I'm using the down arrow this time. And that's pretty close, not, not ultimately precise. But that gets us pretty close with the screen. I'm just zooming out, looking at our uh, ceiling and looking at the corners. So we're pretty close, aside from some distortions. I mean, you could spend a lot of time on this. Um, the more time you spend on it, the closer it'll get. Uh, let's see if we change our rotations here. Ah, oh, there we go. So right now I'm looking at this area right here and I'm trying to make sure that I layer in the uh, the grids kind of line up a little bit better. I'm going too far away. All right, so that's close enough for this particular tutorial. Okay, so now that these images are kind of roughly laid in, you can see the corner of the floor li roughly lines up. Um, what we'll want to do is finish by uh, masking out the photographer and this distorted area. So instead of using average, what I'm gonna do is change my operation by double clicking the merge node and changing the operation to matte. And what this will do is take an alpha channel in the input A and anywhere that's white or solid, it'll show the uh, A image and anywhere that the alpha channel is black or transparent, it'll show the B image. Well, the only problem is we don't have an alpha channel yet, so we're gonna add what's called a roto paint node so we can paint one in. So I'll start typing in the word roto paint after hitting the tab key, select that with my down arrows, enter. 
So there's my Roto Paint node. And what this lets me do is kind of paint with a brush, very similar to what we might do in Photoshop. The really cool thing is right here, my output for this Roto Paint node is RGBA, meaning red, green, blue, alpha. I'm just going to change that by clicking that drop down and choose alpha. And this way, I'll only paint into the alpha. Now, the default value for alpha is um, zero. So there's nothing there right now. I'm going to go ahead and grab my brush tool. Uh, I can go up here in the viewer and change the size. I'm going to go up to 250. I'll leave the hardness at 0.2. By the way, if your images aren't this bright, what I've done is adjusted the viewer. By default, your uh, HDR image may be kind of dark. All you have to do is up here in the viewer, there's an F8 and a little slider. You can make the image brighter that way. You're not changing any of the values, just changing how it looks. All right, now the other thing is by default, my brush, if I hit my color wheel here, it's painting an alpha value of one. So you don't want this down to zero, you wanna make sure that's at one, which is the default. So in theory now, I'm looking at the B image, um, and anywhere I paint with my brush now, I will reveal the A image. So going right here, and look at that. No distortion. Nice. All right, so that's kind of there, roughly. And then I'll paint over the photographer as well. And there we go. So that got rid of our problems. The only thing is that the A image is uh, appearing a little bit darker than the B image. So I'm just going to close out my Roto Paint. In fact, I'm going to close properties from everything. And here, after the B image, I'm just going to add a grade node, which is in Nuke pretty much the same as Photoshop's levels. So I hit tab, type the word grade. I could select it that way, escape. Another way is just tap the G key. So I've got my spherical transform selected, hit G, grade goes in right after it. And then the multiply setting is going to let me lower the intensity of that B image until it effectively disappears. And maybe one last little refinement. I can still kind of see these edges a bit. I'm just going to insert one more node. After the Roto Paint, I'm going to blur the alpha channel a bit more. So with the Roto Paint selected, I'll tap B to get the blur node. Um, like the Roto Paint, I'm going to change my channels. But instead of all, I'm just going to blur the alpha channel. That's a really important step. And then I just extend this little blur. And that should soften all those edges. All right, so that's it. Now we have a lat long, uh, full spherical image ready for use in Maya. So let's just save it out as a file. So the last step is to create a right node. W is the first letter of right. We'll create that. And then I'll just click this folder in the right node properties. Um, if I click on an existing file like lights three, four, five front, that'll give me that file name. And I'm just going to rename the word front to sphere. Now, I've already done that once, uh, so I'm just going to call this Sphere 2. Save. Now, when I hit that Save button, all it did is saved that selected file path to the properties. My last step is to actually render this EXR file. And uh, let's make sure that we do that as... Well, I'm going to leave this at 16-bit. It'll make our renders faster. Uh, let's go ahead and do 32-bit with this one. This is Sphere 2. Render. Just one frame and continue out that file goes all right so that's it we've rendered out our spherical photos and uh, in the next tutorial milady will show you how to use that in maya so until next time have fun